The helmet is the only form of protection that a player has. Jeff DeForest has more. The skill and ability of today's professional highlight player may best be evidenced by the fact there are few serious injuries in the sport. That despite the speed of both the players and the flight of the rock-hard Pelota. But an incident at the Miami High Life Fronton involving the popular front court player Juan will forever stick out in the memory bank of both the fans and players as an illustration of the risk these players take on every toss of the ball. May 18, in the matinee, in eighth games, in boxes. So I was playing my four points, and I take one ball and throw Cortada in the middle of the court, and the other, <coughs> the other players cast the ball in the middle, and when he cast the ball, I was inside, and I want to go to outside, because I was thinking he's going to throw a caron or Cortada, and he is dumps on me. And when he, when he throw Cortada to outside, is in the same moment I was passing to outside and cast in the middle of my head. Do you remember anything after that? So I remember nothing. I was in the hospital and uh, I, don't, I don't remember nothing in one day. When did you think that you would play highlight again? Were you ever scared that you couldn't play again? So when I start talk and think, my wife uh, was in the hospital, and the first thing I said to my wife, I, I don't know, I can, I think I can play anymore. But uh, if I can play anymore, the only thing I want to know is feel good to, to work, because uh, we have uh, two children, and it's the only thing I never f think, like, uh, got to play again. The impact of the Pelota jarred Juan's memory for several weeks after the incident. But the details remain clear for Juan's competitors and the people who came to the fallen player's aid on that matinee card. I guess it was about uh, the whole last time before I got to Juan, after the accident happened, was about eight to ten seconds. Uh, when I got to him, he was he was on the floor. He was uh, comatose. Uh, he, had, he was not cold. Uh, <clears throat> he had gone into uh, convulsions. Uh, he was starting to um, spit up blood, and I knew that that you know we had to do something very quickly, and it was a bad place to do anything for him on the court. So um, we immediately sent for a stretcher. A stretcher arrived. We took him off the court. We brought him in here, and he was still in convulsions. He uh, was having a very very difficult time breathing, and. Uh, checking him he had his uh, jaws had uh, clenched shut he, and he swallowed his tongue so the first order of business was to get the tongue out of the airway and um, we did that we uh, opened up his mouth with what they call seizure sticks stuck my fingers down his throat pulled his tongue out and uh, <clears throat> I gave him a little mouth to mouth um, and he I don't know I guess God was on our side he started he, coming around and he started breathing and the emergency squad arrived here about 12 to 15 minutes after the accident happened and by the time they had arrived here he was uh, he was not coherent but he was in uh, a resting state why don't you ask Irmu exactly what happened that night two years ago with the incident Juan getting hit on the court Él trató de engañarme, él quiso hacerme planta de que iba a tirar para adentro y luego me tiró dos paredes. Uh, Juan tried to trick him, making him think he was going to throw it inside, and he threw it outside. He ran outside, caught it with his right side. Juan was on the inside, thinking he was going to throw inside. He crossed in front of Irma, and he threw it outside, hitting him in the head. The miracle that lies underneath this story was not so much that Juan was able to survive the incident, but that he was able to return to play professional highlight at its most competitive level in Miami shortly thereafter. It brought about a change in Juan's outlook and amazed the people he works with every day on the court. Uh, taking a blow like that, uh, I just, uh, really, it's a, it's a miracle that he that he's responded like he did. He came back very quickly. Uh, he, uh, really, it was just, it was amazing. I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch. 
Juan calls that day his birthday. Well, he calls that, uh, they call, he calls it his birthday because he feels that he was reborn that day. And, um, he, and kind of, in, in a way, he was. Uh, a couple more minutes either way, and he, he you know, it could have been, been the end because it was, I, I've, been in, I've been in pro ball now for about 10 years, and I have, I've never seen any, anything as severe as that. I was at home, and, and I went outside and walked with my wife, and I can walk normal. And after three weeks, I start every day to feel much better, much better, much better. And I start to practice after one month, and I start feeling much better. But I, when I start play again in July, so it's because I want to feel good, and I, and I want to play, and it's the only thing I want to do. Play, play, play. But uh, the first two or three months when I was playing, uh, I got it, uh, a lot of brains. Yeah, I feel dizzy and dizzy. So the last time I feel dizzy is last year in January, February. I feel perfect now. After the injury and, at, and while he was in rehabilitation, he started coming around, uh, visiting the locker room, coming and sitting down. And uh, his attitude had totally changed before. Uh, before he was a, I don't want to say, uh, a monster, uh, he was, uh, he had the killer instinct. He was very, very aggressive and um, radical. And after the accident, he became more at ease, relaxed. He enjoyed every day. He told me he liked to listen to the birds, which he'd never done before.